Hi, welcome to this short video lecture. We're going to be solving another exam problem from heat transfer. So this one is actually a continuation of the last video. I'll provide a link to that video below if you'd like to see that problem, but this one can be done more or less independently. This problem reads, consider the heat exchanger from problem one with five tubes. The oil's inlet temperature is 800 Kelvin and it has a total mass flow rate of one kilogram per second with a heat capacity of 2300 joules per kilogram Kelvin. The water is boiling at a temperature of 520 Kelvin. Assume that the overall heat transfer coefficient based on the inner tube surface area is 450 watts per squ meter squared per Kelvin. What is the temperature of the thermal oil in the tubes at a distance of X equals eight meters after entering the heat exchanger? So I'm gonna scroll back up and we'll see what problem one looked like. Really, we just need some of the thermal properties and the geometry from this heat exchanger. So we had boiling water here in this side. It's basically a steam drum, but it's, it's also a, a heat exchanger that boils this water. So we have a thermal, hot thermal oil that travels through here. The heat comes from this thermal oil. It's delivered to the oil, which makes this, I mean, it's delivered to the water, which makes this water boil. So, it, we covered this in the last problem, but the heat is going to have to get, it's going to have to convect from the oil in the tubes to the inner tube wall, then it will have to conduct through the tube wall, and then it will have to convect into the water. So this means we're not just going to be dealing with a convection heat transfer coefficient, we're going to be dealing with an overall heat transfer coefficient, a U, which describes the rate of heat transfer from the oil all the way into the water. So the radii of the tubes. The inner is five centimeters, the outer is seven. The tubes are 20 meters long, but if you remember our problem asks for the temperature at eight meters. So effectively that's going to be an eight meter long heat exchanger. So when we find the equation we'll just replace the total length of the heat exchanger with x. So scroll back down to our problem. So we've got, well I'll draw a a side view of the heat exchanger now. So we have boiling water here. We have these tubes. I'll just draw a single tube passing through. So we're going to have our hot thermal oil coming in at 800 Kelvin. I'm going to call that TI or T at the inlet. We have this water boiling. I'm going to call that TB and that is at 520 Kelvin. And then the total length of these tubes is 20 meters, but really our fluid, or I'm asking what the temperature is at x equals eight meters. So really we're just gonna look at here, x equals eight meters. So we wanna see how much this temperature changes, this temperature of the oil changes by the time it gets to here. So one thing to recognize about this problem is that we have boiling water in this steam drum. So when you have boiling water, it means that the water is undergoing a phase change, which means that by adding heat to the water, we won't actually be changing its temperature. So we have constant temperature here. So because this water is at a constant temperature, we can recognize that this fluid, this oil traveling through, is exposed to a constant temperature as it travels through. So while the oil's temperature itself will change, the temperature of the other fluid, the water, which is with, with which it's exchanging heat, will not change. So that leads us, I'll go to our cheat sheet. For those not in the class, this is a sheet that all the students get to with just key equations. So we'll want to find an equation that looks kind of like this, except this is set up for flow through a packed bed. Here's another form of it. This is flow through a bank of tubes, which we don't want, so we just want flow through a pipe. And that's up here, I guess. So it's important to note that these equations all have a similar form, and that's when, when there's a fluid flowing through a channel and that fluid's temperature is going to change, but it's exposed to a surface or another fluid in a heat exchanger wh whose temperature does not change. And the, the equation will basically take on this kind of a form. So here we have our overall heat transfer coefficient because this is a heat exchanger where one fluid is um, 
exchanging heat with the other fluid, and that heat has to pass through convection of each fluid and conduction through the pipe walls. So we're going to want this form of the equation, um, where we have our delta T at the outlet divided by delta T at the inlet uh, is proportional to the exponential of U times the total surface area over which heat is transferred divided by M dot times CP. So this is the equation we want. We're going to plug in our U here, which we just have. Here our surface area is going to be something that we have to calculate. So that's going to be a function of the number of tubes and X, how far into the heat exchanger we are. This T infinity we're actually going to replace with our Tb, the temperature of the boiling water. And then here, the Tmi, this is the mean inlet temperature. This is basically our inlet temperature of the oil. And here, we're going to replace this with Tx. So we'll use this basic form of the equation, and we'll just have to modify it to meet our problem. So when we come back to our problem, we can use that same form of the equation. We'll have our boiling water temperature minus our Tx. So this is the delta T at the outlet of the heat exchanger, which we're actually replacing with delta T measured at x, divided by the delta T at the inlet. So that's Tb minus Ti. And that from our equation is equal to Exp times minus U. So now this is the surface area term that we need to plug in here. So this is going to be the number of tubes we have. That's sort of the point of a heat exchanger is to create more surface area. So you add more tubes, so you make this surface area term higher. So you definitely need to account for how many tubes you have times the perimeter, the inner perimeter of each tube. Notice that our overall heat transfer coefficient is based on the inner tube surface area. So we're going to want to use this P on the inside of the tube times X, our distance in the tube, is divided by M dot CP of the oil. So that's our whole equation. Our perimeter is just 2 pi times the inner radius. So now we just rearrange this equation. We want to find T at X equals 8 meters. So we would just rearrange this equation and we would get this equals T sub B minus T sub B minus the inlet temperature multiplied by EXP times minus U bar times number of tubes times our perimeter times our x, which is 8 meters, divided by m dot times cp. So it ends up being, th there's been a lot of explanation that has gone into it, but it ends up being a pretty simple problem where we just use this equation and now we plug and chug. So I'll spare you the plugging and chugging part, I'll let you do that on your own. But if you are doing this on your own, our t at x equals 8 meters comes out to be 542.9 Kelvin. You can also solve this problem using what's called the effectiveness NTU method. In order to keep the video a little bit shorter, I'm going to save that for the next video, but I'll provide a link down in the description. So there's no, another way to solve this using the effectiveness NTU method for heat exchangers. So if you want to see that method, check the link below.